Corey Weissman has dribbled a basketball for as long as he can remember. Basketball has always been my life. There's just some sort of uh, satisfaction that I got just having the ball in my hands. Just from an infant or, or soon thereafter, he just always had to have a ball in his hand. I was looking back at pictures, still pictures, that there's a basketball in every picture and that I did not put there. At Jackson Memorial High School in New Jersey, Corey made an amazing record. He scored more than a thousand points. Scoring a thousand points is just an incredible uh, achievement for me. All the hours and of hard work that I had put in, um, it was just a symbol of, uh, you know, all of my hard work paying off. Gettysburg College knew Corey was a gifted player and wanted him to shoot baskets for the bullets. We need kids who can dribble, pass, and shoot, and he has the ability to do those things plus score. Corey played in three games his freshman year. After the season was over, Corey continued to train. Four years ago, he was lifting weights with his buddy, Brendan. I was in the middle of a, a set and of, you know, workout, and all of a sudden I just got a piercing headache. He saw that I didn't look so, so good and I, I was starting to get dizzy and I guess my face was a little bit pale and he said, you know, let's, why don't we just go outside, let's go to the hallway, get some water, you know, see if you feel a little bit better. Brendan took Corey to the athletic training room to get help. About halfway there I started to stumble and my left leg um, started to drag on the floor. As he came in, um, I went to put my hand behind his back to help walk him in and he almost went limp and, and needed assistance. I asked Corey to, um, I was on his left side and asked him to squeeze my hand and he was unable to squeeze my hand with his left hand but reached across with his right to try to squeeze my hand with his right hand. And that's when we asked him um, to smile and when he did smile it was just a lopsided smile where only the right side went up and that's when we knew um, he was most likely having a stroke. Corey's parents quickly found out the news. A nurse takes the phone and says, Mrs. Weissman, this is the nurse. Your son is in very serious condition. I don't know if they said critical. I don't remember the words. He had a subarachnoid hemorrhage. He had a bleed in his brain, and he's really, really sick. Tina, my wife, called me. Um, I was working about an hour away from home, and she was uh, close to hysterics and said something happened to Corey. Uh, told me in brief what she knew, uh, that he had apparently had a stroke, and uh, uh, it, it, it seemed so unreal, you know, I, I really couldn't even digest it. They packed their bags and made the three-hour trip from New Jersey to Penn State Hershey Stroke Center. Uh, the weather was awful. Uh, I was just very determined to get there as quickly as we could see what was going on. Let me get them to see him alive. That's all I can think about. Let me just get them to see him alive. When he came into the hospital, he was awake and alert, but it was clear that he had had a, a stroke. He was very weak on his left side, his face was weak, and his left arm and left leg were weak. And then we got to the hospital, and Coach met us downstairs in the parking lot. And walked with us upstairs to this room of I didn't know what to expect. This was a kid that was always so healthy and vibrant. I didn't believe until I saw him there at the hospital in the critical care unit, laying there, not being able to move and barely being able to speak. And then it hits you, you know. Doctors explained Corey's condition. The scan showed that he'd had bleeding into his brain and the bleeding was located in the frontal lobe on the right side. What caused his bleeding was, turned out to be a blood vessel malformation, an arteriovenous malformation, or AVM. And this is an abnormal tangle of blood vessels where the arteries are directly feeding into the veins and creates a tangle of uh, vessels like this. And it looks like a can of worms or a bowl of spaghetti. And this creates weak points in the vessels which can lead to bleeding and lead to the stroke that Corey had. He showed us the angiogram on the screen, completely showed us where, showed us Corey's brain, showed us the bleeding. Dr. Cockroft explained the procedure to initially treat the AVM. 
The procedure that, that I personally did was called uh, embolization of his AVM. And what that involves is taking a very small catheter about the size of a thin piece of spaghetti and putting it directly into one of these arteries that's feeding that tangle and injecting through that a liquid uh, glue-like substance, which then causes these vessels to seal up or plug up. It worked. After about five days, doctors knew Corey would get better. So did his parents. I'll never forget, I don't know what day it was, but I will never forget the day that he made a joke. And it was like, so reassuring. It was like, my son's live, he's like there. Corey spent 12 days at the med center and was more than ready to go to a rehab center in New Jersey. My goal from the time that I was fully awake in the hospital was to play basketball again, to get back out, out onto the court. That was my motivation. That's what drove me to work hard. When, when he, he left Hershey, he could barely sit up by himself. That's how weak he was. They had him up the next day walking, that is, being held up you know, on parallel bars. Very quickly, he started to show me, look, Ma, I can do this. You know, I can do this. I can move my elbow, like very small increments. But each day, or every other day, he showed me something else he was able to do. I was wheeled in there on a stretcher, and I couldn't move anything on the left side of my body. And by the time I left, a month later, I was walking with a cane, with a very severe limp and still a lot of motor deficits, but I, was, I walked out of there, which was a goal of mine.